What's up YouTube, Cushy here, and welcome to my new series called How It's Made, Game Dev Edition. In this series we're going to be recreating some of the cool mechanics within the games I've been playing and exploring if we can make it a little better. Today we'll be looking at one of the enemy types within Prey, the smallest of the Typhon enemies. It can camouflage itself into any inanimate object. This is the Mimic. That ability to change into anything is probably one of the coolest parts of the game. And honestly, it's what Prey is known for. So with that, let's get started. So we're going to be using Unity as our engine of choice. If you'd like to try this out, I've included a link to the build down below. Also, I've included a link to the whole project on GitHub. Or if you just want to follow along with a new project, feel free. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new project. And let's go to the asset store and find a first person controller. Uh, we're gonna have to recreate the wheel. There's a ton of free assets that provide you with basic player locomotion and controls. So we're just gonna search first person and choose the first asset. This one looks pretty good, so we're just gonna download it and import it into our project. Alright, once that's imported, uh, we're gonna look through the folders. Uh, let's go into the demo scene, open that up, and check it out. Alright, yeah, this is looking pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is go into our modeling program. In this case, we're going to use Maya. I'm not a modeler at any means, so in this case, we're just going to create a basic prototype of the Mimic. So we're just going to use basic shapes, a sphere for the body and four cylindrical shapes for the legs. When that's done, we're just going to export it from Maya and then import it into Unity. Let's drag that into the scene, and as you can notice, it's pretty small, so we're going to scale that up a little bit. As you can see, it's just a basic gray texture right now, so let's add a material to it, and change that material to black to match the Mimic's color. And the next thing we're going to do is make the Mimic move around this office space. To do that, we're going to use Unity's physics engine and AI pathing tool. So to start off, we have to let Unity know what objects the Mimic can collide with, such as the floor, the walls, the desks, and the pots and plants. So we'll select the world object and mark that as static. This will let the physics engine know that the objects won't be moving and can be used within the pathing tool. We'll then go to our navigation window. We'll then go to the Bake tab and hit Bake. Now when we look into our scene view, we can see all the areas that the Mimic could walk on marked as blue. Next, we have to tell Unity that the Mimic can interact with the surfaces. So we're going to add another component to the Mimic object, and this one's called a Nav Mesh Agent. And we'll just resize that collider to match the shape of the Mimic. And finally, we have to add some functionality to where the Mimic will be traversing to. So we're going to be adding another component. This one's going to be a new script, and we'll just name it Move. We'll then open it up with Visual Studio, so we can add some code to it. I'm not going to be going too deep into the coding, but I'll give a basic overview of what is happening. So what I'm doing is just adding the libraries needed to reference the Nav Mesh Agent component. We will create two variables. One is the agent we're going to move, and second is our target location. And in the update loop, we're just going to set the agent's destination to the target location. Going back to Unity, now we see that the script is referencing a target location. So we're going to just create a sphere and we'll drag that onto the script as a reference. Now time to see if this works. So we'll hit play. And as you can see, the mimic follows the sphere. And we can move the sphere around and it'll always follow the sphere. So the next thing we'll be working on is the animations for the Mimic. So the first thing we need is a animation controller. So we'll create that and this will drive our animation states. Next on the Mimic we'll add the animator component and then hook up the controller that we just made. Then we'll open up the controller and add two states, a idle state and a walking state. Finally we'll add the motion that corresponds to those states. So we'll open up the animation window and create a new one. From here, we can hit the record button and any changes that we make will be reflected into the animation. So for the idle animation, we're just going to make the body bob up and down. 
and we'll create a second animation called walking and just rotate the legs outwards. And time to test it out. And as you can see, it animates while it's moving. Finally, to make the mimic turn into any object, we're going to do a little bit more scripting. So we'll add another script component to the mimic, and we'll call this one change form. There's a lot that I added to this script, but I'll try to break it down for you. So we're going to create a list that will hold all our game objects that our mimic can turn into. We also added two Unity events, one named on reveal action and then the other on disguised action. Finally, we'll add a float called change distance. Now in our update loop, we'll make a check that if the player is closer than this variable distance, then we'll call our revealed action. If it's further away, then it'll call the on disguised action. Then we'll create a new method called choose and spawn object. This will choose a random object from the list and spawn it in place of the mimic. We're going to temporarily disable the move script so we can isolate the functionality. Let's try that out. And it seems like it's working. Now time to put everything together. We're going to modify the move script so that when the destination is reached, it will call a unity action called on location reached. Then we can hook it up so that when the on location reached action is called, it will also trigger the on disguise action. And when the player gets close, we call the on revealed action and we'll choose a new location. All right, and here's our final test. And as you can see, it's working perfectly. All right, and that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll be implementing the multiple attacks that the Mimic has. Thanks for watching and hit that like button if you learned something new or found this entertaining. And comment down below if you want me to do an episode on one of your favorite games.